It was originally nicknamed Luwala Klau, or Smoking Mountain, by a local Indian tribe. Mount St. Helens lived up to its Indian name on a bright spring day in 1980 when it erupted, leveling entire forests and blackening the skies for hundreds of kilometers with volcanic ash. The eruption, though sudden, was not unexpected. Professor Stephen Malone of the University of Washington. Well, on, on May 18, we had been monitoring the volcano for almost two months in which there had been very strong seismic activity, uh, minor explosive activity, uh, as well as some, some deformation where the ground was actually moving. A magnitude 5.1 earthquake earlier in the day may have triggered the most destructive landslide and volcanic eruption in U.S. history. Unlike most volcanic eruptions, the lava and magma did not shoot straight up, but laterally. We think that the lateral blast in this case was due to the asymmetry of, of the magma coming into the volcano. It, uh, it, rather than coming right straight up the middle, it had a type of sideways motion that caused part of the volcano to deform unusually. When the deformation, or bulge, on the volcano's northern slope collapsed, the sudden release of pressure caused the lateral blast. The massive landslide and eruptions leveled 500 square kilometers of forest and killed 57 people. It also killed almost all the plant and animal life in the blast zone. Almost, but not all. Mount St. Helens Monument scientist Peter Frenzen. The eruption happened in uh, you know, mid-May at a time when the high mountain environment essentially was um, under snow in many places. Also, the plants throughout the area were, were in a wintertime condition. They had died back to their roots. So underneath the 1980 ash and blast deposits, there were many living plant roots and uh, burrowing animals that managed to survive in protected pockets throughout the blast zone. Eruptions at Mount St. Helens continued, though none were as destructive as the 1980 blast. During this period of relative calm, the few animals and plants that survived in the blast zone were able to grow and thrive. In the years that followed, other wildlife returned. But Professor Malone says another eruption is inevitable. Uh, it may be many decades to centuries before St. Helens does another really major explosive eruption. Uh, but sooner or later it will. I mean, it's a very active volcano. Two years after the eruption, Congress set aside about 45,000 hectares around the mountain as the Mount St. Helens National Volcanic Monument for research, recreation, and education. As the land is left to heal without human interference, it has become a living laboratory in which scientists and the public can observe the amazing return of life to the area in the shadow of a volcano that will likely erupt again. Ernest Leong, VOA News.